So today I want to talk to you about a purse called the Cabas Mezzo. And the reason I'm going to talk to you about this one today is because I'm not sure I'm keeping it in my collection. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell right next to the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content, and hit the like button for this video if you want to see more content like it. So today I want to talk to you about a purse called the Cabas Mezzo. And the reason I'm going to talk to you about this one today is because I'm not sure I'm keeping it in my collection. This purse is no longer in, sold in the stores. You have to go the pre-loved route. It came in three sizes and I believe they were the Cabas Piano as the smallest, Cabas Mezzo as the medium, and the Cabas Alto as the largest size. And that Alto is huge. I love it. I think it's really pretty. I just didn't get that one because I already had the Neverfull GMs and those are large and in charge themselves. So Cabas Mezzo is a really, really beautiful bag. It is a shoulder bag because it has these two shoulder straps here. And it has, it is um, two pieces of canvas, which is why the LVs are upright on this side. And they're also upright on the back side or the front side, however you look at it. It has one big piece of vachetta that goes all the way around to the other side. And then it has the Louis Vuitton pull tab. And then when you open it up and you look inside, it has one large, large compartment, just like a tote bag. It does have this slip pocket over here, which is a little bit stretched out on mine. And it has this, I believe this was a cell phone pocket back in the day. Um, the Nokia brick phones, if you ever had one of those, that's what would fit in there. But now you could use that as like um, lipstick or hand sanitizer if you're going out. Hand sanitizer if you're going out. And then it has this piece of vachette here that has like a D-ring on it so you could hang whatever you want from there. I think that is it. So, so why I'm considering selling this bag. If you saw my video on handbag deal breakers, one of the largest issues that I have with this bag is this piece of vachetta on the bottom. As you can see, mine has stayed pretty decent over the years because I haven't used it as much as I you know, probably should. And then the slouchiness is the other thing. You can see that it kind of gets a little slouchy and the, the sides kind of ripple. Um, so I am so torn on whether to sell this bag or not. It is it is so beautiful. The like the Vachetta is in such good condition. It's just down here where I know I noticed the other day there's a couple of like you can see like pen mark here and there is where is it? Oh right here where it like kind of gouged and I don't know if that was there when I got it or not. The the canvas itself look, looks really good. No scuff marks that I see. The corner wear is not terrible. I think it's going to be your normal corner wear that you have on any kind of purse that has semi um, rigid corners. So like I said, this bag is so pretty. It's just so pretty. Um, and then on the interior of mine, and I don't know if you can see down in there real well. Yeah, you can. There's some like pen marks down in there. Uh, a couple little things. Again, it's on the inside. You really can't, like you really can't see them. But what I need to do is carry this bag again once or twice more. See if I'm like nervous about it. If I can just make this like a kick around bag where I can just throw it on my shoulder and go. I just don't know if I can get that detached from it because I like to keep the resale value of my purses up a little bit. So this bag on the pre-loved market, I'm seeing it listed for anywhere between like $450 and $750. The $450 one, the bottom of it looks moldy. It looks like it is used and abused. Somebody did not take care of that. So like I personally don't want mine to get there because then the resale value is low. So there's not a ton to say about this bag because it's just that one big open compartment. The good thing is it does have the zipper across the top. So if you like the look of the Neverfull and the like, um, the way you can use a Neverfull, the functionality of the Neverfull, but you don't like that it's just an open top, you're afraid everything's going to spill out, this would probably be a good option for you. This bag is really, really beautiful. It's really durable. The canvas is like in really nice shape. It's squishy enough because it's old enough. Let me find a date code actually. So the date code on these, it's inside this slip pocket kind of tucked into the corner. And this one says 
VI0036. So it was made in the third week of 06. Let me show you that. I don't know if that focused or not, but that's where it is. That's what it says. <clears throat> I bought this pre-loved and I think I've used it two, maybe three times in the course of the three years that I've had it. It is just such a great bag. I, can you guys tell? I'm just so torn. I don't know what to do on this one. Um, just because of that Vachetta on the bottom. I know Tiffany over at LV Lover said that she would be interested in this purse if I decided to sell it to give her first dibs, and I definitely would, but she has the has or had the Cabas Piano, and she said it's such a great bag. It was just too small. So I think that this like medium size really is the perfect size for um, like the purse that it is and the functionality to get with it. The Alto is so big and it's so pretty, but to, to carry, because you have that much space and you, t you know, I tend to fill up all the space as much as I can. These handles get really heavy. Um, I never experienced them digging into my shoulders or anything. It was just, it was just a lot. Like it's pretty heavy. You want to say hi? Somebody just needed some attention. So the back is really beautiful. I don't know if I'm going to sell it yet. I cannot make up my mind. I don't want to regret selling something um, and then wanting it back in my collection. Though I do have my eye on another purse from Louis Vuitton that I've seen one on the pre-love market, but there's actually, you mostly have to buy it new. And so I'm saving up for this purse, but there's just other, I'm kind of waiting to see if they come out with that. They only have it in the Damier bin. I'm trying to see if, I'm trying to wait and see if they come out with it in the uh, monogram canvas because it has uh, different color handles. Um, so if I did sell this one, the money from the sale of this would go towards my next purchase. Uh, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I did just notice here on this handle right here, there's a mark right here and so I don't see that anywhere else. So that is the Cabas Mezzo. It's what I see as the most common uh, issue that, that there is is that this vachette just gets so dirty and mine is really in fairly decent shape for it being from 06. It hasn't like the patina or the the vachetta hasn't patina a whole lot and that is like it's a really beautiful honey color so Tiffany, I may be reaching out to you and seeing, you know, if you're interested in this bag. Um, but if not, I will go the pre-loved route and I will probably try to sell it to Fashion File and on some of the Facebook groups that I'm in and see if anybody's interested. And if not, you know what? It just stays in my collection. So I'm not like angry to have in my collection. I just don't like to have things sit on my shelves that aren't getting use like they should because these pieces are so beautiful. They should see the light of day and people should enjoy them. I look at Louis Vuitton as almost like pieces of artwork. They are just gorgeous, especially some of those like specialty ones that they came out, like Steven Sprouse did a collection with Louis Vuitton. Um, I can't think of any Makatori something. I don't know. Like, there's just so many. You've seen the like white canvas with the colorful print on it. You've seen the black noir canvas that has the colorful print. Those were all like collections, collective things that were done with artists and, um, people in the industry. So I think this purse is so beautiful. I think I am going to part ways with that. But if I haven't made my mind up by the time this video goes up, I will definitely, um, put an update on here or do like a small update on Instagram. So if you're not following my Instagram, go over there. I will link it down below and I will put it right here so that you know exactly what you're looking for. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that this was um, informative on the Cabas Mezzo, kind of the things I like and don't like about it. But if you have any other questions that I haven't answered, feel free to ask them down in the comments below and I will get back with you as soon as possible. I try to get back to every comment that comes in on my channel, um, but sometimes I think I miss some and I have to go back and find those. So thank you again. I appreciate you tuning in today to hear about another luxury purse. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, I got this for my birthday like three years ago. And Hold on. Come here. Come here. You want to come up here? I'm going to be selling this one future in the future. Um, the Mezzo, it came in the Grande? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> my hand bragged. <clears throat> so the Cabas Mezzo and the monogram print. Thank you.
Bye.